But we have to understand that um, if, we, if we don't do this, things will be much worse. People say, well, no, there will be tough adjustments. But I'll tell you what, doing what we're doing now and continue to do it, it won't happen. The checks will bounce. The dollar will go down. Prices will go up. And they're doing it already. The government, Federal Reserve, tells us, oh, 2% inflation rate. Well, ask somebody who's on retirement benefits or ask somebody who's going to school, you know, what the price of living is. What about the price of gasoline? No, the inflation rate is very high, and I think it's just starting. So this means that the people on fixed incomes are going to hurt. And the only solution that they have, whether it's the Congress, they spend more money, and the Fed, they print more money. That's how we got into trouble. You cannot solve the problem by doing more of the same dumb things. But the other thing that happened a hundred years ago or so is freedom was chopped into pieces. And it still, in many ways, is chopped into pieces because there are some people in Congress uh, that do, they do pretty well. And they not, might not even call themselves conservatives or libertarians, but they might be pretty good in protecting civil liberties and personal liberties and lifestyles. And they protect the First Amendment. But they hate the economy, economic conditions, they'll say, oh, but we have to do this. We have to give free houses and free medical care, and, and all of a sudden, you know, it doesn't work so well. But then there's another group who says, oh, we understand economics. We should have free markets. We should have property rights and contracts, but we can't trust the people with their own lifestyles because they might do something dumb. Well, let me tell you, in a free society, you have the right to do dumb things. But you don't, you don't have the right to go to your neighbor through your congressman to get your personal bailout. You have to suffer the consequences of what you do. But what, but what would really carry the day is that you would be rewarded according to your willingness to work hard. You have a right to your life. Uh, we haven't dispelled uh, Jefferson on that. We have a right to liberty. I don't know why it is that we don't have a right to keep all the fruits of our labor. That's what we should have. But in the, in the, in the revolution that's going on, I believe that uh, it has happened significantly, especially in the young crowds in the college campuses where I go, they understand this issue of personal liberty personal lifestyle and if and, and the government can't tell you what to do your neighbors shouldn't be able to tell you what to do and you shouldn't have theocrats running around you know I'm I'm a religious person but I'm not a theocrat I don't want to tell you what to do with your life But we want to see this all in one. And uh, I think the, the really good news is that you break up this dissension and the fighting. Today, they're clawing away the special interests. It's a power struggle. Both parties, all the candidates. I can run things better than I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Well, you know, if I'm to be your president, I want to be your president because of the things I don't want to do. I, I don't want to be the policeman of the world. I don't want you to have to pay for it. I don't want to run the economy because I don't know. No one individual knows how to run the economy. Only you know how to run your economy and how to spend your money. And I certainly don't know what is best for you in your lifestyle. That is your business, as long as you don't hurt other people. Now, when you understand this, economic liberty and personal liberty, international liberty, with, without using force to make other people do our bidding, guess what? We should bring everybody together. You might want to use your liberty for one type of religion, somebody else no religion, somebody else another religion. We understand that. Some people might want to read these books or other books or no books. Yeah, we should come together and say that's the way it should be. 
But uh, but there's not a whole lot of there's a whole not a whole lot of faith uh, by the politicians I know in the people making their own own decisions. But it's very simple. It's not complicated. If I am to make the decisions, or one individual's make decisions, how do I might make a mistake? You know, and how do I know what you want? So if a mistake is made, think of the damage done. It's national. It's everybody. If we start saying you can't do this, you must do this, you can't drink this, you can't take vitamins, you can't have nutritional products, you have to exercise two hours a day, and you know, on and on and on. It's you're no longer a free person. And right now, we're on the verge of becoming even less free, except for the excitement on the college campuses and what's happening in this country. I d Nobody knows the future. Nobody knows what tomorrow will bring. I do know that the foundation of our system is very shaky. It could come down quickly, but it could be changed quickly too. And this is where I'm encouraged because I've been talking about this for 20, 30 years and the receptions have been very, very small. And uh, I've, given, I've given a lot of speeches on the House floor. I've never had an applause on the House floor yet. <laughs> so I'm... So I have to come and visit with you to get some reassurance. And, and I'm so glad to hear that we have allies. But we don't know exactly what will happen, but I, I'm, I'm really very much of an optimist. It's not like, I think our system's gonna get worse before it gets better. The Soviet system collapsed. They were foolish enough to invade Afghanistan, you know, a few other things. No, they, they collapsed. We didn't have to fight a war with, Af, uh, with, the, with the Soviets. Uh, it, but when, when our collapse comes or when we have to make changes, it's not like we have to invent this all over again. You know, we have a, a reasonably good constitution. It's just that we need to use it once in a while. Certainly, certainly the founders understood very clearly that freedom was one issue. Uh, social and economic freedom were one and the same, and they advised us strongly, stay out of the entangling alliances, stay out of the internal affairs of other nations. So the system was there. We just drifted away from it. We lost our confidence. We've lost our confidence in expanding our understanding of how free markets work. Today, there is a move on. Keynesian economics is going to be old business pretty soon because it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. I see what's happening in Washington. I see what's coming from the other candidates. I see them as the past. I see you as the future. Some people, some people get discouraged because they say, well, you're not getting 51% of the vote, 51% you have to have it, but it isn't true. What you need is an irate, tireless minority willing to start fresh fires in the minds of men. And there are some days like today that I get more optimistic instead of a brush fire. This looks like a forest fire. It's great. <laughs> I've always resented it when they say that, oh, I'm a candidate, I like what you're saying, but you're about 200 years too, long, too late. Well, you want to go back to the 19th century. Um, but that is wrong. That is wrong. Freedom is a new idea. It's, it's, uh, it's only been tried briefly at different periods of time. We've had a magnificent trial. It worked very well, and we have rejected it. When they talk about going back to the old age and, and the old days, that's what they're doing. They're going back to tyranny. Everything today is a movement toward tyranny and control. That is old-fashioned. It's been proven to be wrong, and we have to reject it.
Ideas do have consequences, and the good ideas have good consequences. Bad ideas have bad consequences. I think the ideas of liberty is a good idea, and it will have good consequence if we do our work and our efforts and participate one way or the other. People ask me constantly, what, what should I do? You convince me, you're, you're right, tell me what I'm supposed to do. I said, do what you want to do. You do what you have to do. Some people, but the most important thing that we do is understand the issues. Understand why non-intervention overseas is good for us and good for them, good for everybody, good for the world, and good for the cause of peace. We need to be able to defend that. We need to understand why personal liberty means that, yes, we have to be tolerant of people even when they make their mistakes and do things that you don't approve of. And you also have to have a firm understanding and be able to defend why free markets provide greater prosperity than interventionism and socialism and welfare and inflationism. That is not the road to prosperity. There's still a fair amount of fear in this country that if you have too much freedom, that it won't work. I don't think so. Uh, I guess we'll never have a perfectly free society, but we have a shortage of freedom, and we need to substitute that fear with more freedom and understanding. I've had members of Congress uh, sitting beside them when they're voting, and they're voting for something to take more control over your life. And I say, why are you doing that? And, they, and, and he literally said to me, well, the people are too dumb. The people are too stupid. And, and that, that attitude prevails uh, on both sides of the political spectrum. You, you can't take care of your own personal life and you can't take care of your own economic life. But when you see the results of what a free society can bring, and this, this to me is the road, the best chance we have for peace and prosperity. That should be uh, our goal. The other personal goal that I think we should consider, and that is uh, seeking uh, excellence and seeking virtue in a personal way. Nobody can impose excellence on us. Nobody can impose virtue on us. But the governments are always trying to do this. They're trying to say, well, you have to do this and this and this, and then we'll become a virtuous country, even to the point of, you know, spreading ourselves with missiles and bombs. But if, if, we go, if the government assumes that role and assumes this role that they can protect us from ourselves, believe me, there will be no liberty. But today, this idea of liberty is alive and well and growing by leaps and bounds. So though we have great problems, I finish with a bit of optimism because there's a large number of people, the young people of this country have had enough of what they're seeing coming and they want to change it. They like the ideas of liberty, they're principled, they like the Constitution, they don't like war. And there is a large segment of other people that are joining. The independents and a lot of Democrats now are looking at this and say, you know, this makes sense, it's common sense. This will bring people together, this whole philosophy of liberty. So I am convinced that if we understand the principles of liberty, where that liberty comes from, it comes from our creator, it doesn't come from our government. If we understand that, I am convinced that we can return to the Republic of old and once again have peace and prosperity in America. Thank you very much. <laughs>